Hi, it's Chester at Blue Beacon Computer Training. And in this video, we're in Excel and we're going to have a go at working out expiration dates. Here's our book club membership list, got the start date of the membership, and we've got various terms here for the membership. And with those terms, we're going to work out the expiration date. So we'll start with 90 days, then 90 working days, Monday to Friday, uh, 15 month term. 12 months, end of month. So 12 months from the start date, but the end of that month. For example, we start on the 8th of September, 2020, then we look to end at the end of September, 2021. Then uh, first day of month after full month. For example, if I start on the 30th of May, I get a full month, which would be June. And then I start the first day of the following month, which would be the 1st of July. Then three years exactly, and then three years, but returning the last day of the previous month. So for example, if I start on the 8th of September 2020, I'm looking to finish on the last day of the previous month, which would be the 31st of August 2023. You'll also see that I've applied some conditional formatting here. So any expiration dates that are overdue are formatted with a blue background. Okay, let's see how we can do these calculations. Let's start with a 90 day term. What I would do is I would refer to my start date and then literally add 90. I'm hard coding the 90 into the formula here. You might want to consider putting your term in a cell and referring to that cell in your formula. It would be a more efficient way of writing your formulas. For the ease of this exercise, I'm gonna hard code these values into the cells. If I copy that down, I get a calculation there, 90 days from the start date. If the term was one day, something interesting happens. You can see that a one day term actually gives me a two day membership on the 30th and the 31st. So you might wanna consider, for example, if you had a 90 day membership, subtracting one from the calculation. Depends on your scenario and how your membership works. Now, 90 working days, that's skipping over Saturdays and Sundays. We can use the workday function, give it a start date. I'm hard coding the term in there, but again, you might want to refer to the value in a cell. I have this non-mandatory argument holidays where you can specify bank holidays or other non-working days. You can hold those dates in cells and refer to them. We won't do that in this video. Returns the serial number of the date. All I have to do is format it as a date and then copy it down. 15 months exactly. For that, there is a function called edate. Give it a start date and then the number of months. So if I type 15, again, I need to format the cell to show a date. I get 15 months on from my start date. 12 months, end of month. Now for that, you use the end of month function, EO month, start date, comma, 12. And what that will do is it will return 12 months on from the start date, but the end of the month. So I started on the 30th, but I'm ending on the 31st. Started on the 8th, but I'm ending on the 30th. First day of month after full month, you can use end of month for that. So I take my start date, put in one for my month, and then I'd add one to take me to the first day of the next month. So that means I get the remainder of May, the whole of June, and then my fee is due on the first day of the next month. Three years exactly now, one way of doing that is to use the date function. And you have three arguments here, year, month, and day. So I need to pick up the year element of my start date. So I can use the year function to do that. And it has one argument, value, but I'm gonna add three to that. The month would be the month of my start date and day will be the day of my start date. So I can use the year, month and day functions within the date function. There we are, it returns exactly three years on from my start date. What if I wanted three years on from my start date, but the last day of the previous month? So on this one, I would practically lose a whole month. 
I'd want to return the 30th of the 4th, 2023. Now I can use pretty much this function here. I'm gonna copy it, paste it in. But instead of specifying a day with the day function, I'm gonna put in a zero. And that does exactly what I want it to do. It returns the last day of the previous month, three years on. So I've got the 30th of the 4th for this and the 31st of August here, corresponding to the 8th of the 9th, 2020 here. Now, if I want to show the expiry dates that are overdue, I can use some conditional formatting. I'll start with this column here, select the sales, go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine which sales to format. And what I'm doing is I'm writing a formula for the active sale, which is D five. I don't want the dollars in, so you can manually delete them or press the F4 key to delete them. Is D5 less than today? So is the date in the past? The today function returns to today's date, but it keeps it up to date. And then if that is true, I want to apply a color. So let's go for red, for example, with white font. So it really stands out. Click on OK, click on OK. And those are the overdue dates. Now, if I want to apply the same settings to the other columns with the sales still selected on the home tab of my ribbon, I double click on the format painter and then I click on the first cell at the top of each column and it applies the same rule and formatting to these other columns. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.